everybody, I know a lot of you are multitasking in a presentation like this. You're, it's a busy day, we're all busy. Please stop what you're doing for 60 seconds. Let me just tell you what we're gonna talk about. Then you can decide to multitask or stay here and make some freaking money. Now here's the yin and the yang. There are so many cool speakers that you've already heard today. I just caught the last one. Marketing, you're making money. My daughter's a realtor. I did my first Caldwell instructional training for a group 15 years ago. I've been teaching realtors and real estate investors and dentists and doctors and anesthesiologists and plumbers and morticians for 20 years, helping them save money. That's the yang. The yin is making it. And realtors are great at making money. My daughter, Sydney, who's a realtor in Orange County, California. A shout out to Sydney if she's watching today. I wanted to make sure she, <laughs> she's out there. But there are so many talents that a realtor has, but one of them that usually is lacking, I know you, I know your language. You're great at talking and selling and building relationships and making people feel warm and fuzzy. I'd rather go to a dinner with a, a realtor any day of the week versus an engineer. And you know what I'm saying, you engineers out there, don't be offended. But doing the details, saving money, being organized, having your S Corp done, talking to your accountant at least once a freaking year, you're terrible at that, most of you. And I know it because you hate it, and most people do. I'm not trying to pick on you here, but I'm saying give me this 45 minutes, I think is most what I have. I need to know, Chuck, so I know my cutoff time. But guys, I'm here to save you some money. I'm going to give you my hottest tips before you're in. And as Chuck said, and I say this humbly, there is no other tax attorney in the country with more books, no, more YouTube followers, and more podcast listens anywhere. I have specialized in the Main Street America. I love my Main Street clients, my small business owners, and that's what you are. So I'm gonna let you moderate, Chuck. You can cut me off. I'm gonna throw out, do you wanna answer, ask the questions? I want people to type up questions. If you're like, Mark, you're full of crap. My accountant said this. What about California that? What about Idaho this? Right now I'm broadcasting from Idaho. I have a place in California. We have an office in Arizona, Utah, Idaho, and California. I am in your world. I know you people. I'm here to help you. I want to answer all your questions as fast as I can. So that's my intro. We're going to talk about what structure, how to write off your kids before year end. Are you going to buy an auto before year end? Are you going to convert to a Roth before year end? There's a lot of deadlines in the next three freaking weeks. And your accountant's not going to tell you. You got to take some proactive action. You are the captain of your ship. So that's my intro. So if you can just focus for 45 minutes, this will be this will be taking that medicine with a spoonful of sugar. I'm going to try to <laughs> I'm going to try to make it go down. I know you don't want to talk about this, but we're going to make it work. Okay, Chuck, are we good? Anything else? No. We're going to dive into it, it. It's all you, Mark. Thank you. Bring it. Okay. Do you do you want to me to give you after each little tip? You give me a couple questions you might think are the best out of the chat. Uh, we can do that, but since you got 45 minutes, man, you always bring the gold, and we could also save questions after, and uh, if that's okay with you, and then those who got to tune out at 12, you know, are gone, and then maybe we can come back and revisit the questions at, at noon if that works for you. Okay, let's do that. So everybody, don't type your question in chat right now because we'll probably miss it. Write it down on a little post-it right next to you. If you're like, Mark, what about my payroll? I wanna pay my kid who's in college right now. I wanna write off for my truck before you're in. Write down those questions if I don't answer them. Now, here's what I'm gonna give you. Write this down as well. Here's my top 10. My top 10 tax strategies, and they're not gonna to apply to all of you, but I'll tell you, at least six to seven of them are gonna probably hit most of you. So here we go. Here's the top 10, and then we'll talk about them as much as you want. Okay, number one. Okay, and I'm gonna put top 10 tax strategies before year end, and this is 2020, baby, right here. The crazy year of 2020, which will go down in infamy, right? Okay, number one, you've got to save on self-employment tax, which means all of you making more than 40 grand a year better be a freaking S-corp, S-corporation, or an LLC taxed as an S-corporation. If you're a brand new realtor, you're probably an LLC waiting to make that jump. Some of you that are an S Corp now, you're taking the wrong amount of payroll. Having the S Corp, step one, taking the right amount of payroll, step two, taking the payroll when you're supposed to is step three. So we can break those down and there's a lot, and I have a color payroll matrix of where you should be. You wanna call your accountant but in the next five weeks and go, what are we taking for payroll? Am I paying my spouse? Am I doing a 401k? Am I doing health insurance premiums? 
All that crap has to be on your payroll statement, your W-2. And if you're not in charge of it, who is? Number two, I want to talk about you real estate professionals. That means if you are buying rental properties, it's common that a lot of CPAs will screw up your tax return. Chuck and I have talked about this for years. If you're going to buy a rental, and I'm going to talk about the trifecta, we'll come to that in a moment, real estate professionals and rentals. We're going to hit that. Number three, I'm going to hit it. Just the easy stuff. This is a low-hanging fruit. Home office. We've got to make sure that you're taking the home office deduction, even if you have an office at the brokerage. Number four, dining. Too many clients screw up dining. There's a 50% rule and a 100% rule. Are you buying food for an open house or are you taking someone to lunch? Different rules. Number five, auto. The best it's been in 30 years. Are you gonna buy a truck, SUV, car before year end? Are you doing mileage? You doing an actual, you doing leasing? <laughs> Lots of issues. Corey, be ready to go with that link on that blog article for that. Any blog articles on these 10 that you can pull off my blog, let's be ready to put the links in chat. Number six, we're gonna hit travel. When you go away for Christmas, I want you to have your board of directors meeting. All of you should have an LLC at least, and probably an S election or an S Corp Inc. PC, professional corp. That's where you should be getting paid as a realtor. We'll talk about it if your broker is not, that's okay. But you need a board of advisors. You need a board of directors. You need a corporate book. That piece of paper from LegalZoom three years ago, it's crap. You've gotta make sure you're doing all the pieces and parts. You get audited, you're screwed. You're not gonna have any asset protection. Your board of directors meeting makes your Christmas holiday a write-off. I wanna write off travel when you're traveling for holidays because you're doing business when you're traveling. Number seven, we're gonna bring in family pay. Are you gonna pay your spouse? You're gonna pay the kids? Kids under age 18? Kids over age 18? Too many people pay taxes and give their kids money. Uh-uh, they're getting a 1099, baby. Put it in their Christmas stocking. <laughs> All right, number eight, health insurance. Are we writing off our health insurance premiums properly? Are you doing a health savings account? Are you doing an HRA? Do you even know what those are? If you don't, you're probably getting screwed. I had a phone call with a client yesterday that in, did in vitro fertilization in 2019. They spent almost $50,000. They found me in 2020. We did their ta we're doing their taxes this year. We did some planning. I said, what are your medical expenses this year? They go, oh, five or 10 grand. I go, okay, we could do a health reimbursement arrangement, write that off through an S Corp sister company. You get a write off for all your medical. And they said, hold it. You're telling me I could have wrote off $50,000 in medical last year? Yeah, everybody else, that's how you do it. That's what accountants should be teaching you. They missed a $50,000 write off in 2019 that would have reduced their S Corp income. People, you cannot guarantee your CPA knows what they're doing or they're communicating with you. You are the captain of your ship. Number nine, we're gonna bring in retirement accounts, baby. Are you funding a 401k, a Roth, a safe harbor Roth, a backdoor Roth? Are you buying rentals with your Roth? Are you buying rentals with your 401k? Are you self-directing? If all of that sounds foreign, there's a whole new world. Just come and see. Sorry, I won't sing again, Chuck. Okay, retirement plans. We gotta make sure all of you are doing your backdoor Roth, which is due by December 31st. Okay, number 10, all the goodies, electronics, cell phones, cell phones for all your family members who are on your board of directors, cameras. You see that last little training you got on the camera, the drone, the video, the Facebook, the computers, the laptops, the iPads, all a write-off. My entire studio here is a write-off. Are you writing off everything at Best Buy and Apple Store? And the list goes on. Home office supplies, equipment, furniture in your home office. People, you're gonna miss out if you don't take advantage of this. This is your little meeting with Ben Affleck at the beginning of the movie, The Accountant. You gotta figure it out. All right, okay, those are our top 10 strategies. I'm gonna just kind of say a few things about them in 30 minutes. I think, Chuck, the best method here, I'm gonna call an audible. This is what Brady was good for at the Patriots. It's her, he's hurting in Tampa Bay, right? Oof. I'm gonna call an audible right here. I'm gonna go through a strategy. I'm gonna pause. Any question on that strategy, post it in the chat. Chuck, you come out, you pick the best question. We'll hit it, we'll go to the next topic. Sound okay? Absolutely. All right, number one, self-employment tax. Here's the deal. 
All of these strategies start with what I call the trifecta. Write this down on a piece of paper. The foundation of everything you're doing is going to be your revocable living trust, which is never going to be in your name. I don't want it in your name. We're going to do privacy strategies as well. Remember, I'm a lawyer and an accountant. We're doing asset protection and accounting at the same time. This is your 1040. Everything flows downhill. It's like water coming down the hill. So the trifecta is made up of your operations and your investments. We're gonna come back to this diagram throughout the whole thing. Operations, investments, all flows down into your family trust and your 1040. You don't own anything. We're gonna create good estate planning and good asset protection and good privacy. That's the plan and we're gonna build on it. If you're a brand new realtor, you're gonna be a sole proprietorship for about two minutes and then we're gonna get you into an LLC so I can make an S election when the time is right. Then we're gonna convert. This is the principle. If you make 100 grand, everybody listen, this is so important. If you bring in 150,000 in, in commissions, okay? And if you're on Chuck Whitehead's team, that's averaged. You're trying to get to 10 grand a month, that's 120 a year. You should be hitting 150, that's the goal. Chuck's working on that or better. Then you're gonna have 50 grand in write-offs, auto, dining, travel, kids, electronics, cell phone. We're gonna write off everything under the sun 50 grand in write-offs. You netted 100,000. Here's your net, 100,000. Easy, right? Do you have to have an LLC to take a write-off for all that? Nope. You can do it tomorrow. We're gonna write off all that crap. 100 grand. Now, uh-oh, you've got self-employment tax. Self-employment tax kicks in at 15.3%. You're gonna pay 15 grand off the top. Then you're gonna pay state and that's in Utah, Idaho, and California. Then you're gonna pay your federal. People, you could be losing on your first 100 grand, close to 50% of your income. That's why the yang of saving money is as important as making it. Now, the S Corp comes to your, your benefit. This is your savior. This is your number one strategy. If I run the same 100 grand through this, so I have my 150 in sales. I get the same freaking write-offs. I net 100 grand. Oh, no self-employment tax. And I get the 199A 20% deduction. But I got to take a salary. So what we do is a split. I take 40 grand in salary and 60 grand in pass-through. I only pay the FICA on the 40,000. That's the F word, FICA. Social Security, Medicare, 15%. I pay it over here on the W-2, but on my pass-through, my draw, my K-1, you don't get a paycheck every week. I know income's up and down. We're gonna do a payroll report quarterly, and by the way, you cannot do it at the end of the year. I know many of you on the call are, well, my account just does a W-2, one at the end of the year. Yeah, welcome to the audit you're gonna get someday, and your account's gonna go, oh yeah, sorry and you're gonna be left holding the bag. You have to do payroll quarterly. You're gonna to have to do an estimate and you're gonna kind of guess what your payroll should be each quarter. Then we clean it up at the end of the year. It is a report. You do not get a paycheck. I do not care what your cash flow is like. You take a draw anytime you want. Many of you S Corp owners know this. Chuck has been living this for years. Easy schmeasy. But look, I only paid FICA here. I just saved 15% on $60,000. That's $9,000 in savings. So I either pay 15 grand in self-employment tax or I pay six grand in self-employment tax on the payroll. I just saved 9,000. Now I know some of you are like, well, I'm in California, it's $800 for an entity and then I gotta do a tax return and payroll. That's right. You're gonna spend two grand a year doing your S Corp. I get it. Let's do the math. Uh, spend two save nine. Now this is hard math, but just work with me. Spend two, save nine. I think you're gonna be okay. And the more money you make, the more you save. That my friends, is strategy number one. Get your S Corp done, get the payroll right. And I have a spread, a payroll matrix to nail your payroll at the right amount. And it's going to be in a 30 to 50% range, maybe as low as 20% allocation to payroll. If your accountant's making you take more payroll than that, they're costing you. If you do payroll at our office under our method and you get audited, we'll pay the penalty. 
we'll pay for the whole audit because in 20 years, I've never had a client audited for taking the wrong amount of payroll. We got it. All right, Chuck, that's strategy number one. Questions, what do we got? You know, Mark, I think everybody is literally just like loving it and taking notes like crazy. Um, I mean, how do we get started if we don't have an S Corp is the first one. I mean, there are a lot of people who are just getting rolling. Okay, that's a great question. All right, so let's do this. For those of you, and isn't this awesome? See, this is the nuts and bolts. I know all of you are starving for, but heaven forbid your accountant speak freaking English or you trust your lawyer to give you a straight answer. So I'm here, this is important. By the way, I got a weekly podcast. I got a weekly newsletter. I'm going live on Facebook today at four o'clock. I do it every Thursday. I'll be here for you. I'm gonna be your new resource for this. And then you go to your local account if you want. You can use someone national, nationwide, you can use us. Don't care, but you gotta get some info. All right, so here's 2020 and here is 2021. And let's say, let's do example number one. One of you is a sole proprietor. You made money this year. Let's say you made 50 grand. You were a sole prop, no LLC. No LLC, sole prop, and you netted 40 to 50 grand. There's nothing I can do. I would say this. If you know you're gonna do that or more next year, in the next five weeks, let's get your S Corp set up, go straight to an ink, just do it right, and set up your new S Corp 1121. We charge 450 for a DIY, paralegal helps you do it right, same price as LegalZoom, get all the parts and pieces, or 800 bucks, you meet with one of my tax lawyers on a phone call on Zoom, and they will help you set up your entity and answer all your questions. For an hour, they're gonna knock it out of the park. No one ever has complaints. They love it. 800 bucks if you need it with a filing fee for whatever state you're in. Okay, do it, price it, whatever. Don't use us, it's cool. I'll give you my contact info in a bit. That's those people that have no LLC, no corp, and you got hosed this year. I hate to tell you, you're SOL. And I ain't talking statute of limitations. <laughs> That's a new joke of mine, Chuck. He's like, okay, now, number two. Number two, some of you are in LLC all year long. And this is the first you've heard of an S Corp and you've just been taking your profit all year long. God bless you, that's great, no problem. I can backdate you into an S Corp as of 1120. You have to do your S election retroactive with a special revenue ruling that allows you to do it. We charge 200 bucks, done. Then you've got to do your payroll before January 15th. So you're gonna get a W-2 for the whole year. You're like, Mark, I already took my money. That's cool. We're gonna allocate some to payroll. Everything else falls out the bottom, no self-employment tax. Now you still pay your state and federal income tax. The reason why we do an S-Corp is to save on the F word, FICA. What the FICA? We don't wanna pay that. So that's why we do the S-Corp. So any of you that are an LLC, not taxed as an S-Corp, and you made more than 50 grand last year, no brainer. Get your payroll service set up, get your S election done, and do a corporate tax return for last this year, 2020. It'll be due next year, and you're gonna save thousands. Done. Option three, any of you that are already an S Corp, your job is to make sure that your payroll is the right level. Talk to your accountant. I've got my books here, Tax and Legal Playbook on Amazon. That's where I go is Tax and Legal Playbook. I've got videos on uh, why do an S Corp on YouTube. I've got my Tax and Legal Library on my website, blah, blah, blah. You can learn a bunch of that. I had a client yesterday. Yeah, it was yesterday. She goes, Mark, I'm sick and tired of knowing more than my accountant because she's been following my podcast and my YouTube videos. And I'm like, I know. She goes, I just fired him coming your way, you know? So, but you got it. You're the captain of your ship. You don't know how to know the form. You just gotta know what your account's doing. So make sure you're nailing down your payroll in the next three weeks. Which your W-2 should include health insurance premiums, anything you're doing in a 401k or a Roth 401k, and your payroll amount for the year. Okay. All right, any final questions on S-Corps? The, uh, there, there's a bunch, but I think we probably won't be able to get to them all. Just the, the one big one is just, what's the minimum I should be making before I incorporate? That's the number one question across the board. Um, if, if people, you're an LLC now, um, when do I make the jump to the S Corp? 
Because I tell all realtors, if you're in for the long haul, with my daughter in California, I set her up as an LLC. Because if she hits it big, I want to be able to backdate into an S-corp. So all of you should at least be an LLC. It's good for asset protection, good to get used to it, get your EIN, get your corporate credit going, get your branding done, you got your name, blah, blah, blah. So do all that. When do you make the election? When you're netting at least 40 grand a year. If you're netting 40, so think 3,000 a month. You're like, Mark, after all my expenses, yeah, I'm making about three to four K a month then you better be an S-Corp. And it'll say anything above that, uh-oh. Uh-oh, Mark, we're, we're losing you a little bit. If you don't do it, you're gonna be living in Shit Creek. Oh, show, I wasn't swearing, that's a TV show. And you don't wanna be living in Shit Creek if you've ever seen that. It's not good. Okay, that was that's one of my new ones. Do you, you know you're you're going to be up Shit Creek? Now you're going to be living in Shit Creek. See, and it's a show. I'm I, I can say it. It's not even scary. It needs an S, S, S on the I, end. It's Shit Creek. That. Okay. All right. <laughs> Strategy number two. And you're doing your S corp. This sister company is your LLC brother sister brother sister i don't care but guess what the s corp does not own the llc the llc does not own so your trust owns your llc's when we do an entity for you we talk through all that what state are you in you married remarried single kids blah 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 but you're going to have your two companies ses corp in LLC, you put your rentals over here. You put your 1099 over here. You, you pay your bills, you take a draw. Once a quarter, the accountant calls you and goes, let's do your payroll report. You don't get a paycheck, we just do a payroll report. Once a quarter, bing, 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 bing. Over here, your rental is owned by the LLC. Do not worry about the due on sale clause. As soon as you close, your mortgage has been sold 10 times. You're gonna buy your rental in your name, keep Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac happy, close, and then deed it to your LLC. The LLC will collect rent beyond the title, beyond the lease agreement, and this is creating asset protection for you. LLCs do not save taxes. LLCs are for protection. Now I have entire videos on how many LLCs, You're going to be all that depreciation is right off against your W two and your K one. So Chuck. here in my matrix and I could be, oh, Chuck calls me up. Mark, let's buy a rental in Tennessee. They're cash flowing great. We got a good property manager down there. Done. I'm not gonna buy my rentals in Southern California. What are you crazy? I don't wanna buy a $2 million meth lab in San Diego. I'm gonna go and buy rentals where they cash flow. So we set up a Tennessee LLC. My trust owns maybe 60% and Chuck's owns 40%. I think that that's fair. It was my idea. But anyway, so LLC, okay, 50-50. So 50-50, my trust and Chuck's trust. My S Corp has nothing to do with it. So whenever I have a new partner and buy a new rental, we set up an LLC for that partnership. Now, if I buy two rentals in Arizona, I might put two rentals in my Arizona LLC. All the conversations, do I register in California? Da, 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 we don't have time for it. But anyway, okay, so we're buying rentals, we're getting the losses, even though we have cash flow, the paper losses are wiping out our income on the other side. We get a refund, we buy another rental. It's a machine. Do you know what my realtors retire on? Their self-directed 401k and their rental income. Boom, but a man. Any real estate pro questions, Chuck? Anything on rentals? Uh, I, I think we're good right now. Um, I'd say keep charging, Mark. 
Keep charging. Okay, next topic. And by the way, and Mary Beth, I think I saw you doing a screenshot with your phone. I freaking love that. <laughs> I love you. Okay, Mary Beth, I'm gonna draw a master diagram when we wrap this up in 14 minutes, people. So we're gonna bring this together. You're gonna love it, Mary Beth. All right, dining, 100% food for an open house, food for a workshop, food for a training or a sales event for your customers, 100%. You go out to eat, you write down 100% but your accountant cuts it in half. You've got to make sure that on your bank statements, on your credit cards, uh, you're trying to help your accountant by coding them with two different highlighters. At the end of the year, Christmas time, you're going to get some eggnog, you're going to turn on Elf, and you're going to sit down and start coding your bank statement and your credit card statements. And you're going to go, oh, that was for an open house. Oh, that was for a training meeting. Oh, that was for a sales meeting. Okay, 100%. Food dining out, 50%. You can even write off dining by yourself when you're traveling outside of a normal commute. If my daughter's in Orange County and she goes even to Long Beach or LA or San Diego or Riverside or Oceanside for a meeting, that's outside of her normal commute. She can stop it in and out and take a ride off for lunch, even though she's by herself. When I travel for business, all of my food is a write off because I'm traveling for business. Home office. Do not let anybody talk you out of the administrative home office. Now you could take home office in your S Corp is a deductible rent expense and non-taxable to you or a lot of times with my real estate professionals the bear, the best place to bury i mean right off your home office <laughs> is over here in your llc you need the home office not to run your realtor uh projects but to run your rentals so why not just bury home office over here then write off rent at the brick and mortar down the street in your s corp S Corp rent, home office, LLC. IRS is happy, doesn't even care. You look clean, audit proof. See, a lot of people go, oh, well, the home office is high risk. No, it's not. I've never had a client audited for home office. Just don't get greedy and try to write off two grand a month. Let's just do reasonable home office and write it off against your rentals and you're a real estate pro, so those losses come over anyway. Auto. Um, Corey or Luis, can you put that link? I wrote an article in January for 2020. It's a link on choosing the best deduction method for your auto. The auto deduction is amazing. I, in that article, I go through eight rules of thumb. Should I, if I buy a lower price vehicle, but I'm doing a lot of miles, I'm going to go mileage. If I'm buying a higher price vehicle, eh, not as many miles. I'm going to go actual. If I'm buying an SUV or a truck, I can write off 100% of it now this year if it's 100% business. The bonus depreciation was Trump and the GOP throwing fire on the auto deduction. It's the best it's been in 40 years. I have some videos on YouTube, and that article that Luis and Corey are putting down in your chat line, that article is excellent. It's on my blog, markjkohler.com. Now, any of these topics, go to markjkohler.com. Let me just say this now. If you go to markjkohler.com, I've got a blog with a search window. Any of these topics, you can search for an article. Number two, you can sign up for my newsletter that's free every week, and you get my ebook, The Top 10 Tax Mistakes Small Business Owners Make. 30 pages, you get it for free. Just comb through it, and then just talk to your accountant about it. Just know enough to captain your ship. Uh, there are my lo my YouTube video links, the most recent YouTube videos I'm doing. I've got a video I'm doing next week on the PPP forgiveness app now. I'm doing YouTube videos on year-end strategies, Roth backdoors, paying your kids, blah, 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 all that stuff. Go to markjkohler.com and you can sign up for free and search any blog article. I'm just gonna say this, there's no easy answer to auto because some people lease, some people buy, some people da da da, -da. but the point is, you can buy a car truck between now and the end of the year based on the business use percentage. I may very well be able to write off the entire thing if it makes sense for you. And that's car, truck, or SUV. The write-offs are amazing. Study up on it, and I'm not saying go out and buy something you don't need. But if you're going to upgrade, do it in December, not January. All right. Uh, travel. 
everybody now here's important back to our trifecta hey so in our mark yes oh question i i just wanted to mention this because i thought this was something that a lot of my agents were excited about that you said when you just said that you can write off a car this year if it you know you might be able to write up to off to 100 percent um i loved when you said and maybe you can expand what if i get a loan a car loan 100 percent write off still you could go i've done it myself you can go into a car lot i know this sounds crazy it's true this is the rule up to stand by it all day long. You could go into a car lot on December 31st and buy an SUV or a truck that weighs at least 6,000 pounds. I'll give you some auto ones here in a second. But if you want to buy an SUV or a truck, you could put down a dollar, buy used, and get a loan and write off this whole darn thing on December 31st for the whole year. Love it. Love it. That's if it's a hundred. That's if it's 100% it. business use. And you got to be able to show, I got a car to go to the grocery store in the movies. Well, who goes to the movies anymore? But, you know, that that write-off. Now, if it's a car, I can write off up to, oh, my gosh, I want to say 18 grand to 19 grand in year one and another nine grand in year two. So you're writing off almost 25 grand out of the gate on a car. But again, if you only buy a thirty or forty thousand dollar car and you're going to crank out twenty thousand of miles and hold it three years, you're going to be better off with mileage. So again, you've got to look at your situation, the cost of the car. But don't worry about loans. Don't worry about used or new. That's how Trump and the GOP freaking gassed it up. Is they're like, we don't care, new or used. We don't care credit or cash. Just go out and buy something. They're trying to stimulate the economy. Okay. Now I'm going to bring this together in our last. 10 minutes talking about travel, family, healthcare, retirement. Oh, this is going to be hard. I Oh, by the way, I'm going to say this. If any of you are interested, my last workshops of the year are tomorrow and Saturday. I do basic class tomorrow, 6 to 4, I mean, 9 a.m. to 4, 6 hours, and then advanced class is Saturday, 9 to 4. It's fully recorded. You can watch it up to six months later. You can uh, catch what you can tomorrow, but I, in order to get the Zoom links out for everybody, tonight at 6 p.m. Mountain, we're cutting off registration. But if you want to join us, you can sign up at markjkohler.com for my basic and advanced workshop. I'm going to have 12 hours where I'm not talking 500 miles an hour. So just check that out the next few days if you're interested. All right. So here's your S Corp. We're going to write off electronics, auto, home office, or rent. Over here, we're going to do home office, travel, because we're going to travel to check on our rentals. We're going to buy rentals where our family are. Travel, uh, all of our little goodies write offs marketing, legal, accounting, home, blah, 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 blah. You're gonna have a board of advisors, BOA, a board of advisors for your LLC. So at Christmas time, you can meet with your adult children, your parents, your best friend, your, you don't have to be married, you, can, you don't have to have kids, to whoever your people you're hanging out with, put them on your board. There's no liability exposure to them. And you're gonna hold a board meeting for your LLC. You should be doing company maintenance for your LLC anyway. Get to my law firm through the link at my site, kkoslawyers.com. CMP, company maintenance program, 150 bucks a year. We do the minutes, we give you a questionnaire to fill out. When you have your board meeting, you're cranking. Then at your S Corp, you're gonna have a board of directors. They could be the same people, but you're gonna have three to five people here, three to five people here. That allows you to now write off travel because you're gonna be having your board meeting at Christmas time. I wanna write off travel to meet with customers, clients, go to workshops, trainings, and my board meetings. If you're part of a brokerage, your S Corp is gonna own your share of the brokerage. This is the LLC for a law firm. All the lawyers are S Corps. Engineering firm, all the engineers are S Corps. Brokerage, all the realtors are S Corps. That's how you do it. Easy, it's been doing it for years. Over here, you have your LLCs for your rentals. So LLC for rentals, LLCs for operational partnerships, S Corp for you. I, Mark Kohler, have one S Corp in my life it owns all my other LLCs that are operational. My trust owns my S Corp. My trust owns my LLC. My trust owns my personal home. It all comes here. 
and a river runs through it. Brad Pitt. You know what I'm saying, ladies? It all goes to Brad Pitt. It, needs, it does. It just does. Okay, now, this little bubble, this is called the management company. And the only reason I use this one is to pay my kids. Now, nah, there's two reasons. I pay my kids under age 18. So my kids under age 18, quit giving your kids money, paying taxes and giving your kids money. Put them on the payroll, get a write-off, and let them pay for their own soccer and school clothes and Christmas presents. It's totally legal. The New York City deli hires their kids after school. The Oklahoma City farm hires their kids on the farm. The Idaho potato farm hires their kids at the potato harvest. You can hire your kids to work in the home office, cleaning rentals, cleaning your home office, vacuuming, stuffing paper uh, envelopes and putting up signs. It's a family business. You know it. Take the write off. But you got to do it before December 31st. You know where I was this morning? I was, I was at Wells Fargo making sure the manager knew all my clients coming in locally. Because one of my ER doctors that has a private practice was like, his wife called me, Mark, I'm going in to set up accounts for all the kids today and we're going to pay him 15 grand for this, this, and this. I go, okay. And she goes, the banker didn't know what the hell they were doing yesterday. I'm like, all right, I'll stop in. So I talked to the manager. I'm like, Lane, you got to make sure that when my clients come in, you don't give them a runaround. He's like, I got it. I got it. He's a new guy. I got it. See, you, so you got to be setting up bank accounts for your kids, doing the payroll, and doing all this before you're in. But you don't do it out of your S-Corp. Because here's the beauty. When you pay your kids out of a uh, sole proprietorship, no FICA, no SUDA, no FUDA, and your kids don't pay taxes on the first 12 grand. And they're still a dependent of yours. I know. It's insane. You got to watch my videos on YouTube. Come to the workshop tomorrow and Saturday. I'm going to break down all the steps and what you tell Wells Fargo. This is thousands of dollars in savings right here. Oh, but I have kids over age 18. Kids over age 18 get a 1099. And I'm going to say 18 and over. Any of your kids under age 18 get paid through a management fee and then to the kids directly as outside services. So we funnel the money, we launder the money. Oh, I shouldn't say launder. We clean the money. Oh, sorry, this is Ozark and Better Call Saul. I gotta be careful. We're gonna move the money through our management company and pay the kids. That's what we're doing. That was another joke. You know, Marcy, you're the only one. Andrea, you're the only one si smiling. Jamie, thank you. Gosh, you're killing me, guys. Philip, that was a good one. Hey. Ozark? I quoted Ozark in a tax training. You gotta love that. All right. We're gonna move the money to pay the kids down here. Okay. Now, here's what's cool. You ready for to go to turbo next level? This is the basics. This is the basics. Now that I've paid my 10 year old for helping in the business or my 20 year old that's at college that can't pay for their own bills. I know they have earned income. So my 10 year old can open a Roth IRA along with my backdoor Roth, along with my mom's or dad's or spouse's Roth. And now, oh, I even have a 401k solo I set up. We're doing those before year end because by December 31st, it's over. All of my Roths form an LLC with my 401k and I buy my next rental tax-free that pays for my kids' college and my retirement tax-free forever, forever. That's what Smalls would say. This is, is serious. My clients learn how to self-direct my good realtors sell rental property to their clients' retirement accounts. Let me repeat that. Are you just selling single family homes? There is trillions of dollars in retirement accounts. People are scared to death of the stock market in this upcoming year. Let their retirement accounts buy rentals. Learn how to teach that and share that concept. Here's my partner's best-selling book, the best-selling book in the country, Self-Directed IRA Handbook, SDIR, sdirahandbook.com. Will you put that in the chat, Luis? sdirahandbook.com. You can buy a copy of his book, get the videos over there. I'll be teaching it on Saturday. I'm hoping to have Matt come in for a half hour for a breakout session. Okay, so we're, fund, we're paying the kids. We're funding retirement accounts. We're funding a solo. Yes. Someone say something. Did I hear a high five? Woo! Okay, we're gonna be paying the kids over age 18, under age 18. We're gonna be funding retirement accounts. Who are we forgetting? Spouse, mom, 
Dad, I'm helping support my family members. Oh, should I put my spouse on payroll? I've got a whole video on YouTube. Put your spouse on payroll. Find the sweet spot. Now, don't YouTube the sweet spot for your spouse. You're going to get a whole other set of videos I'm not responsible for. But you want to do payroll for my spouse, Cole or sweet spot. I have a whole video on it. So when do you put your spouse on payroll? Do I? Don't I? Typically, the rule is only to fund his or her 401k. So I might pay the spouse, but I'm also going to be thinking about my health savings account or my health reimbursement arrangement. So I may pay the spouse to fund an HRA, or I'd pay the spouse to fund a 401k, or I don't pay the spouse at all. Now, for those that are single out there, you may be helping mom or dad. I've literally 1099 my mom or dad or father-in-law for help with my rental properties and helped them pay their taxes. And I got a write off at my bracket and mom who's on social security hardly paid any tax at all. Plan your taxes as a family. When you sit down with your accountant, you're like, hey, I'm paying this kid, I'm helping this kid, I'm helping mom, I'm helping dad, I'm helping brother-in-law, sister-in-law. They should all be on the company board of directors. You're paying them and getting write-offs. And even if you help your kids pay their taxes, it's cheaper than you paying taxes. All right. It is 1259. <laughs> that was boom. So Mary Beth, that's one of my master diagrams. We're going to be building onto this tomorrow and Saturday in a big way. If you ever get my books, you'll see more of this. Don't feel pressure. I'm not a could use car salesman, but Chuck, I'm doing Q and A as long as you want. My, my secretary is bringing me a burrito, so I'm good for a while, whatever you want. I love it. I love it. Um, Mark, we have had so many questions. Um, I think people are really, really enjoying it. Um, people are right now, here's the last message I got here. No, please don't stop. Um, can you talk oh, thanks, a little bit? <laughs> can you talk a little bit about what's going to happen tomorrow? I mean, do you, how would it work if somebody exactly wanted to log on and watch? Because I think that like, it's almost like a college education in six or seven hours if they can sit on your nine to four. And I should mention that, is that Central Standard Time? Um, that would be mountain time okay. tomorrow at nine o'clock it starts now what's fun tomorrow morning in the first hour and a half i'm talking about everybody getting out of debt giving you a debt snowball saying we're going to watch a little dave ramsey we're going to set up your acorns account your roth account and your savings account so that you can start building wealth outside of your operations then we start expanding from there. The structures, the S-Corps, the LLCs. I do Q&A the whole time. We're doing a breakout session for just women, another breakout session for men. I've got my female attorneys and CPAs helping out. We're doing a breakout session for East Coast and West Coast, a breakout session for over 30, under 30, and a breakout session for no kids with kids. And it, so over two days, and it's three or 400 bucks, but you can watch it recorded. If I don't save you 10 times that, Seriously, if I don't save you three or four grand in taxes this year alone, I failed. It's worth it. But anyway, if you want to go there, uh, just go to, in fact, I might be able to just show you right here, markjkohler.com. And um, I'll just go here and I'll just share my screen right here. This is just, a, this is my website, markjkohler.com. And just go to workshops and you can read up on it. And there's the business owner workshop. Um, and when we go over there, come on, boom. Four weekends, eight sessions. The last one's December 4th and 5th. And uh, here's what's in it. You get a discount if you go to both. And testimonials, blah, blah, blah. So you can learn more about it there. Anyway, but don't feel pressure for that. Guys, at least, here's what I'm saying. Don't, this is not a sales pitch. This was not an infomercial. Chuck didn't even know I, I had that tomorrow. I'm just saying, at least at my website, Sign up for the newsletter. Peruse it once a week. Go to my YouTube, hit the bell icon and follow. Every time I shoot a new video, you get a ping. I try to keep my videos under eight minutes. And there's a tip every week. I have a podcast, two podcasts a week, free. Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify. Links are on my website. So there's a lot of free content there. The books are free. I, I launch a Christmas special tonight. For, to get all my books for a friend or family member for, I have a $50 deal, no, a $25 deal, uh, 99 and 150, all gift wrapped and signed by me, whatever. Okay, 
Keep talking, Chuck, whatever uh, you want. Well, I, I've bought them, they're great. Um, I'm getting a lot of people that, um, we do have a large chunk of the people on the call that have had very good years. I mean, because for the people that have been adjusting to COVID right, um, they okay. have actually been doing great. And a lot of them are, are sending messages to my phone right now talking about, I'm paying hundreds of thousands in taxes, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Could you, do you mind talking about what the Saturday, and I mean, that's something I, I mean, I'm very interested. What What is the advanced class look like on Saturday? What kind of topics will be covered in there? I know you're starting with the nuts and bolts on Friday. Uh, what's Saturday look like? Well, believe it or not, Friday, we're gonna get, see Friday is basics in that I'm gonna talk about how to utilize your S Corp, paying your family members and your LLCs and asset protection for that and your rentals. We're gonna go through that tomorrow. So there's, you know, some stuff. Don't feel like you guys are don't need the basic. You need it. Um, but here's some advanced, and let me give you okay, so for my high income earners, let's do this. I'll tell you what I'm doing. Um, okay, so here's your 1040. I think most of you. First of all, you got to look at your income for the year. So if any of you are making more than hundred grand a year, and I know Chuck, you got a lot of people on the line that are doing that. So There's pay attention, lot. everybody. Here's what I would do. You're making one, two, 300 grand. The first thing is in your S Corp, we've got to make sure you're writing off everything under the sun. Auto, dining, travel, home office, PDAs, laptops, computers. I want to throw in the kitchen sink. So don't miss those little things. They can add up. Number two, if you do have children, I want to be funneling money to the kids immediately. So I'm going to 1099 my kids over 18 and over, and I'm going to be setting up my management company for kids under age 18. No brainer. Let's shift income out of your name into the kids. So that's good. So number one, all the little write-offs. Number two is going to be kids under age 18 and kids over age 18. Next, the solo 401k. I cannot say enough about that. If you're making one, two, three, or 400 grand, you may say, well, Mark, I do both. I want you to fund us. We, we've got a, 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 a discount price and a regular price, which includes an hour with another attorney. The 401k can partner, like I said, with your backdoor Roths and buy rentals. So now you're buying rentals inside your retirement account. Then you're also buying rentals together. And I'm telling Chuck every year, buy a piece of a rental, no matter where in the country, because those write-offs will offset your other income. So I'm gonna say that's number three, is don't forget your backdoor Roths and your 401k. Number four, you've gotta be looking for your rentals. And I know some of you are like, Mark, I can't buy a rental in three weeks. I get it. I've had clients buying RVs in the next three weeks. Think about this strategy. I had a phone call yesterday afternoon, two guys in Texas, they bought four RVs used. You think a lot of people, that, you, you know, this has been the number one year for RV sales in America, ever. All the people stuck at home in the spring bought RV. Do you think there's a few people with buyer's remorse? There are steals on Craigslist and eBay for RV mobile homes. Maybe you buy a mobile home RV, just an idea an RV or mobile home and put it in a rental pool before year end. Even if it doesn't have a rental, a day rented in this year, but it's available, you got it, you took delivery, you bought a used RV for 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, 100 grand, whatever. These four guys spent 200 grand on four RVs used. They already have them in a rental pool. Bonus depreciation, 100%. Wow. They're gonna write off 200 grand of mobile home RVs this year and get them in a rental pool that cash flows 30% on their purchase. They're gonna cash flow 15 grand a year on a $50,000 RV. Now it's not gonna appreciate, but in three years they paid for it. It's now just a, a cash ATM. Could you buy those in your LLC owned by your 401k? Yes. You could write off 50 grand in a 401k, buy an RV, create tax-free cash flow in your 401k and get a write-off to do it. These are the little strategies that you wanna be thinking about. Okay, so paying kids, rentals, solo 401k, you're nailing your salary. You've gotta make sure your salary's accurate. I'll put that in number, six, in number five. Are you gonna put your spouse on payroll, number six? 
you can do a DV plan. I've got realtors that do, it's called a defined benefit plan. I could write off 100 to 200 grand. Equipment is nice because it's 100% bonus depreciable. So I don't know if you need a backhoe or a four wheeler to push snow around in front of your rental property. I have three rentals in Idaho. Okay, my Idaho people, I got three rentals in Idaho. I got a four wheeler to push snow around for my rentals. Right off. See what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, Chuck, I'm all yours. You tell me what you want to talk about. Okay, I, I do have one person that's asked the same question a couple times. Are you familiar with any of the California propositions, specifically Proposition 19? Okay, Prop 19 got modified, of course, in this last election cycle. It actually was there to help people inheriting property from their parents and keeping the same tax basis for property tax. Now, Prop 19, other than that, is a mod podge, right? But here's the thing. If you're, okay, let me tell you where Prop 19 doesn't matter. If you're buying a rental property in Fresno, it cash flows, and you're, or maybe somewhere inland, you're getting a good deal. You're not going to be buying rental properties in the Bay Area, right? Okay, so you're going to be buying rental properties inland, and you're going to buy a property in your own name, and then deed it over to your LLC. Do you care about Prop 19? No, because the, the property tax value was nailed when the purchase occurred. There's no reassessment because you haven't held it for years and years. Now, for some of you that have had a rental property on your books for years in California, you deed that to an LLC, you're going to have a Prop 19 problem, right? They're going to want to come in and reappraise that for property taxes. So you got to be careful. Now, when you deed your own home to your own LL, your own trust, so back in our di trifecta, when you deed your home to your trust, on the cover sheet in California, I can get you out of Prop 19 because it's your own home to your own trust. So there's an exemption, so there's not a reassessment there. But guy, I have a California attorney in the Irvine office, Lee Chen, he's great. You wanna to talk to him about Prop 19 all day, book him for a half hour, book him for an hour, 300, 400 bucks an hour max. And with Lee, you can address these issues. Lee is a rental property owner himself in Orange County. So I love, he's been an attorney with me for 10 years. So talk to Lee, schedule an hour with him. You're good to go. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm gonna open it up. Um, Peter, any, anyone else have any questions before we let Mark go? Uh, let me see, can you buy life insurance? Yeah, Christine, I'm not a big, and invest your money in rentals. You're a real estate professional. I think you're gonna get a lot more big bang from your buck with rentals. And by the way, all of you know, we're gonna have a buyer's market this year. We really wish it in 2021. The foreclosures and evictions are piling up and you know it banks are holding back they don't want to be the first person to foreclose on someone in colorado foreclosures are piling up on top of the covid people it's going to be a buyer's frenzy out there you guys are going to make great money this coming year you got to be ready to roll uh but life insurance uh, we can talk privately i'm not a big fan um can you write off a solo prop or LLC with under 40 grand a year, home office, kids, vehicle, food, travel? Shanae, absolutely. Everybody, everybody, look at In your structure, if you're not an S-Corp yet and you're just a sole proprietor, that's cool. We're writing off kids. We're writing off all the crap. We're doing a 401k and all that. It's all good. But when you start making more than 40 grand a year, um, if I knew, do you suggest a, for, a solo 401k? That's Kim. I would wait to do the solo 401k until you've got the profit to do it. I'd like you to get, get your S Corp set up, get your expenses done, get your backdoor Roth going, buy your rental property, get out of debt. Okay, Mark, I'm nimble. I'm ahead on my taxes. I'm ready to go. Solo 401k. Now, like Chuck said, some of you had a couple hundred grand big year, three grand, 300 grand, 400 grand. Let's get out of debt. Let's get our taxes set aside for this year because a lot of you are not ready for that. Let's set aside our taxes. Let's get our solo 401k funded, our Roth, backdoor Roth. Let's do all the basics. Then let's talk. You know, we can get bigger and better. Um, who's the attorney that works under you that handles patents and trademarks? That is Darren Charrington. Darren, 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 Darren. Just call up and go, I need a, a half hour hour with Darren, tell him your idea, your plan, and he will meet with you. 
tell you your options and give you a price if you want to move forward. Our trademark cost is, I think, seven fifty plus each uh, mark that you want. Um, I'm just looking here, Chuck, if there's something you want me to hit. No. Nope. SEP and 401k. I, I call it, I, I screwed up and did a SEP. How do I get to a 401k? That's the purpose of my video. So ultimately, I'm going to get you out of a SEP, especially if you're a solo owner. Okay, Chuck, what was up? Someone's coming out live? No, I was just going to say, Mark, uh, just in the interest of your time and everybody else, man, I think, uh, I mean, I think... I just can't tell you how much we appreciate it. This is all the notes I have. I mean, I got notes after notes after notes all over the table like I always do when we hear from you. Um, and I just want to say thank you. Uh, we are going to, I'm sure there's going to be a ton of you guys. The clock is ticking, guys. So um, if you want to be set up for a corporation next year or whatever it is you're hoping to do, get to Mark as soon as you can. I mean, it drives me crazy to see people leaving money on the table. And like I said, Mark's going to help keep it in your pocket. And, and that's really what it's all about. And Mark, you know, one of the speakers, we got some complaints earlier that, you know, that this person was all about, um, you know, themselves. And you're always giving information, dude, for free and reaching out, trying to help people. And I just want to tell you personally how much we appreciate how much you've helped us all, uh, you know, in our financial lives. So thank you for that, Mark. Thank you, everybody. And oh, and today. Oh, hold it. When's your event in today? Chuck? Noon. Oh, you're done now? Yeah. Pretty much. OK. At four o'clock mountain. I'll be YouTube live and Facebook live talking about my 10 year end strategies. Now you heard a lot of them right here. So I'm gonna be answering questions nationwide in three hours or two hours and 45 minutes. So if you like my Facebook fan page or get over to my YouTube channel, Mark J. Kohler, you'll find it right away and subscribe and bell icon. When I go live, you'll get a ping. So if, if later today you want to jump on for an hour and just listen in. And, and, and guys, the funny thing is, Chuck comes to my class every year. He always learns something new. I learned some things new this week. I, I could seriously tell you three things I learned, the strategies that blew my mind this week. So I'm always learning something new. But really, my bread and butter is the same stuff. It really is. So once you get a lot of this cranking, it's just adding on some bells and whistles every year. You'll love it. So it's not it, it's not rocket science. Don't let your accountant or your lawyer bamboozle you. My hourly rate hasn't changed in three years. We don't have a huge upfront this, that, or another. We have reasonable rates. So check us out if you need help. We're here. But awesome. Thanks, hey, everybody. And how's the burrito? Good. Yes. Thanks. I'm starving. It's <laughs> one thirty here. I haven't even had breakfast. So. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mark. We appreciate it. And we'll be in touch soon. And I'm sure everybody will be reaching out to you at markjkohler.com. So thanks, Mark. Thanks, everybody. All right. All right. Well, hey, guys. Holiday. So I know there's uh, 230 of us left, and I think we'll get up with about 2,000 views. But for those of you guys that stuck around, right? You see why we stuck around for that guy and that material? Like, I hope that changes your life financially. I mean, you know, that's what we're always trying to bring you as guys like Mark. So... Anyways, um, hey, we're, we're up for closing comments. I can tell you that I am gonna chop all this stuff up and you can go to Facebook. Um, if you wanna just, you know, shameless plug here, if you wanna go to the chuckwhiteheadshow.com on Facebook, all of these things are gonna be chopped up and cut into pieces, still whatever you want. I know you can get it on West page, on Lance's page, on Lamoureux's page, um, anything and everything you want from these last two days. But I just wanted to say thank you guys very much for tuning in. Any final comments, Lance, Peter, Chris, Lamoureux, Todd? The home run, Chuck. Home run, man. And I, and and thank you because you always start with these things, and we ask you to if we can be of help, and and you still do ninety nine percent of it yourself. So, thanks for coordinating and putting together. Great job. Thank you, Lance. Thank you. Anybody else before thanks, we head up? Thank you, Chuck. No problem, Peter. Thanks, Th Chuck. Great job. Thank you, guys, all. And hey, go out there and uh, make Good the job, most Chuck. of the rest of the year, and go get it. Get your S corp set up. Get your life financially in order and go sell some houses. So thank you guys very much and hope to see you all soon.